Now to the debate over whether sex work should be decriminalized. It's a proposal that has lawmakers talking in several states. And as m you might imagine, there's passionate debate on both sides, particularly when it comes to the impact on people of color. One state in the thick of that debate right now is Maine. And while Maine is overwhelmingly white at 94 percent, according to the last census, much of the discussion there reflects discussions across the country. Tonight, we are having that debate. In Portland, we have Representative Lois Galgay Reckitt, a Democrat in Maine's state legislature. Uh, she sponsored a bill that, among other things, decriminalizes sex work. Also in P Portland, Dee Clark, the founder of Survivor Speak USA, an organization that opposes decriminalizing sex work. Dee and her group back an amendment to the bill that we'll discuss in a moment. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Thank you. Okay, Representative Reckitt, uh, let's start with you. Your bill decriminalizes sex work. Why not fully legalize sex work as opposed to just decriminalizing it? The problem with, um, with uh, a total decriminalization uh, is that it, there's no, um, no impetus to decrease demand for sex work, which is really the key to the issue. Uh, if you only de if you decriminalize both sides of this equation, you have what happened uh, in Amsterdam, uh, and the the amount of sex work goes sky high. If you do it in the way that the um, <clears throat> the the uh, victims of the sexual exploitation are decriminalized, then in fact, uh, and the buyers of the sex uh, continue to be criminalized, and in fact, in my bill, be are criminalized further than they are right now. Uh, that helps to decrease demand, and in the countries where that has happened, uh, the demand has decreased by anywhere from uh, 25 to 40 percent. So that's really the key. That the other key, of course, is to provide an a, uh, exit ramp for women to, uh, women who are 95 percent of the of the uh, people exploited uh, to provide them an exit ramp so that they can build a life that doesn't have to involve sex work. So a follow-up for you. Okay, so buying sex will still be illegal in Maine if this bill passes. This is often called the Nordic model. Many people argue you have to legalize, yes. though, both the buying and selling of sex to make a difference. If you prosecute buyers when women who sell sex are still likely to be harassed by cops. So can you explain why uh, you chose the Nordic model? Well, because I've, I've seen the studies in the seven countries where it's in existence now. And in those countries, the uh, incidence of uh, buying of sex has decreased dramatically. Uh, and in the and the countries where you, that have the other model that you're, which is the traditional way to deal, um, where people where we try to arrest our ways out of our way out of this problem, uh, it does absolutely nothing to stop uh, the incidence of sexual sexual exploitation, which in Maine, like every other place in the in the country, uh, predominantly preys on uh, young women. Uh, and predominantly black and uh, black and brown women and children, uh, as well as transgender individuals. So this is really just the, for me, it's the wrong <laughs> focus. It doesn't work, uh, and it uh, provides a, a significant other problems. Uh, Dee, I'm going to get your take uh, next, but first, let's hear from Tierra Ross, who testified at a recent virtual work session on this bill. She described herself as a survivor of sex trafficking. Uh, take a listen. I'm afraid of decriminalization and engaging in prostitution become legal. More victimization will happen in our communities. In Maine, there is already a lack of resources, and the resources do not trickle down to the last girl, black, brown, indigenous, young girls, women, and trans, who are the most victimized, exploited per people statistically, globally, nationally, and even here in this very white state of Maine. Where will we get more resources from? Decriminalization comes from a very privileged place, and it leaves out the last girl, victimizing her even more. Ross says the bill Representative um, Reckitt sponsored is overall a good bill, but she supports adding the amendment that you back, D. Tell us more about the amendment and why your background led you to oppose the bill. LD1455, an act to support survivors of sex trafficking, and sexploitation gives all prostitution a defense. 
the way the defense for human trafficking stands right now is women who are arrested for prostitution can have an affirmative defense if they can claim it and prove it that they're being trafficked, human trafficked, which leaves out women who are not at the moment with a third party, but are still stuck in exchanging sex for money or resources. Our bill gives both the sexploited, the sexually exploited person and the trafficked person a defense and the burdens on the prosecutor, the burdens on prosecution. They don't have to prove anything. Some might say, well, then why don't you just decriminalize? Because people, you know, the prosecutors aren't going to be wanting cops to arrest people because it's going to be the burden on them. That's true. But if there's some other harm being done, well, let it be discovered. But if it's straight up prostitution, there's a defense. Decriminalizing is very harmful. It's very harmful because, like Ms. Ross said, the, the people who are most exploited are black, brown, indigenous young girls and women too and trans and not only are they most exploited they're the least of, of who gets services so the services that come to me specifically are for sex trafficked women so there's grants to come in there's training to come in that teaches the state how to identify and what they identify is sex trafficked and it leaves that other person out. But either way, the services are very little if you can get, gain them. And it's hopeful that people want services for people that are trying to come out of the life, we call it the life. But they're not really there. Survivor Speaks provides very little, but does provide a path out. And we've had some successes. Mm -hmm. However, leave, if we decriminalize prostitution, we have to call it what it is. You all are talking about sex work. In the main criminal code statute, there is no word sex work. It's prostitution, and there's three layers. We're talking about engaging in prostitution. So that means I want to use my sex to access money or resources. Engaging in prostitution. Is someone trying to say something? And if we decriminalize that, meaning that the person that's engaging in the prostitution that has this sex for sale, however you're going to call it, if we remove that, well, that makes it really easier for perpetrators to come in. You know, we've been right, in the life. We're right. all ex-prostitutes. We've had pimps. We know what's happening. We know what recruiters do. And it's going to leave young girls more vulnerable. Well, uh, Representative um, Reckitt and, and Dee, uh, this conversation is definitely something that we can't unpack in a five-minute segment. So hopefully we can have you both back on to continue this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you.